welcome to the second, second Witchy Wednesday of 2015. Can you believe it? After two in a row. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, but one of the things that's coming up at the moment, especially because I'm uh, my journaling class, When Frogs Sing, we're doing a year long project and some of the people in the group are doing uh, Wiccan or Pagan projects like um, a year and a day and things like that. Uh, and because I've got some goodies to share, I thought I'd do a little, I'm not going to call it a haul because this is stuff that I've been accumulating over quite a while. I didn't just go out and buy it all in one go. Uh, it's bits and pieces that I've picked up uh, sort of in the latter half of last year. And uh, it's not really a review because most of them I haven't actually finished reading or I'm only just starting to use. Um, let's call it a show and tell. A books show and tell. Because it is mostly books and magazines. In fact, it's all books and magazines. Huh, how about that? I do like to read around the subject. Okay, so let's start with... Let's move these out of the way. This is my book pile. Let me just sort it out. There is one uh, thing missing out of this pile and it's another magazine. Um, and I'm actually wondering if I should do a magazine one separately because I've got two magazines that I get regularly that I find really interesting. Yeah, I might do that. I might do that next week magazines that I get. I'm only subscribed to two uh, but they're they're worth getting in my opinion. Uh, one of them is a recent one that I've got and the other one is one that I've been getting since about since issue one. I think I've still got issue one somewhere. Anyway I digress. Books. This is books. Let's call this a books show and tell. Uh, I like to work through books or work from books or dip in and out of books. And one of the things I'm loosely doing this year is a year and a day. I say loosely because year and a day is a Wiccan concept and I'm not Wiccan, I'm a witch. What's the difference? Well, that's one of the reasons you might want to do a year and a day project. Um, I like to find out new things and with the group and you know the, the videos that I'm doing and everything else so many people are asking me questions that I can only answer from one perspective now there's nothing wrong with that uh, and I do direct people to other Wiccans who are specifically Wiccan um, Laura Dalligan is one of the best on YouTube in my opinion uh, and I do tend to send people to her uh, if they want Wiccan gods and goddesses type stuff um, and obviously, if you want tarot and general chaotic chicanery, uh, I think she'll like that word, chicanery, <laughs> you can go and watch uh, The Four Queens. I don't teach anything, witchcraft, pagan, whatever. Uh, but I do like to share what I'm reading. I do like to research a lot myself. I like to read very widely. And I've never really read a lot of Wiccan stuff because I kind of do what I call natural witchcraft. I'm a hedge witch, you know, I, a lot of what I do is very intuitive. Um, I suspect Four Queens would call me a chaos witch because I don't really adhere to any one genre, if you like. Um, so one of the things that I'm looking at this year is specifically Wiccan stuff. So I've picked up three books that are year and a day type books or one year type books, almanacs, uh, and that's these. So I've got The Wiccan Year, Spells, Rituals, uh, Holidays, Celebrations. Uh, this is by Judy Ann Nock. Sorry about the little jump there, I had to go and get my glasses because can't see without them, yes. <sighs> Judy Ann Nock, author of A Witch's Grimoire. I'm pretty sure I've got The Witch's Grimoire somewhere. I always get it um, confused with the Grimoire for the Green Witch, but I've read a Julianne Knock book before and I quite liked her style. Uh, this is the Wiccan Year. As you can see, I have not read it yet. 
Now I don't really do rituals or anything and I really only follow the moon phases. I don't really do... I mean I dress my altar for the sabbats. Um, but I don't really... I don't really do the sabbats in the sense of ritual or anything like that. You know, I, I, I have a Christmas tree and I celebrate Yule. Um, and I, I, I celebrate Imolk, you know, because that's my new year for me. Which I explained last year, if you didn't go back and watch um, Witchy Wednesday. It was one of the first three I did, something about Imolk. And I talk about it being my new year and why. But, uh, you know, I still like to read around the subject. And this caught my eye because it has so many different things. It has astrology references. It has references to um, historical celestial events like full eclipses and things. It's got legends. It's got um, rituals and remembrances and meditations. It's even got recipes, you know. Uh, solar Cross Abundance Buns for Ostara. I believe you would call them hot cross buns in the rest of the world. Um, they do sound nice though. <laughs> Not vegan. I'm going to put that in there. So, you know, it's it's got the correspondences with the chronological correspondences with like Beltane and Libra and so on. Summer solstice, la la la. I can't tell you what it's really, what it's like in... in great depth because obviously I haven't read it yet but uh, it seems like it, see, it seems like a, an okay book to have a read through if you're a beginner uh, looking to find out a bit more about the Wiccan year because or, or even the, just the wheel of the year whether you're Wiccan or Pagan um, obviously the Wiccan year it's gonna have a lot about the God and Goddess I would have thought but you know, you can just skim over those bits and ignore those bits. Or, you know, just relate the myths of the God and Goddess to what you know about the actual Wheel of the Year. Uh, she is <clears throat> she is from New York, so she is quite American-centric. It's not really ye olde English way of doing things like we have over here. Um, and if, if I remember correctly from the grimoire that she did, some of it is a little bit jarring doesn't quite fit with the way we do stuff here but it's just different cultures you get you you get used to the more you read the more you get used to different styles and um, you know different ways of doing things I suppose it's got some neat little things I like all the can you see all the embellishments and things aren't they pretty uh, and it's got little doohickeys around the page numbers which are on the side so if you wanted to use those to color reference different bits I'm sure you could that's what I would do if I want, was using this for as a reference book I would colour code bits and pieces to to say you know which bits uh, I was really interested in so I think that'll be an interesting read now this isn't the kind of book that I would read through a year I think that's what it's intended for I think the intention is that you read um, each section um, season one the journey begins on October the 31st and then it will, it takes you right the way through to the next season and you know if you're reading it and learning it and you know taking it seriously then this is going to take you probably a month or two to get through uh, and then you've got Yule but I think you know you could probably work through that section if you're going to read that section and you know try some spells from it and do the meditations uh, perhaps read read more widely there's a massive reading list at the back of the book um, perhaps put some of this into your into practice or write it up in your book then I could see that taking you three months to get through easily if you want to you could take that three months at a time uh, I will probably just read it through in one sitting, to be honest. Well, not one sitting, but, you know, all in one chunk, because I know most of that. I don't really need to learn it as I go, but there's bits and pieces that I probably will want to pick out of it. If you're looking for a daily, quick read, year and a day type thing, then the Spell a Day Witch's Almanac from Llewellyn is very good. 
Again, it's very Wicca centric and if you're familiar with Llewellyn publications, it tends to be a little bit airy fairy hippy dippy let's all hug type stuff you know if you've read the Llewellyn books you know what they tend to be like uh, but that said this is actually quite um, quite to the point it is literally just an almanac with this is how it's laid out so you get four um, well mostly four four days on a page sometimes it goes over uh, each month has an introduction page or two and you know you get your various different astrological references color of the day incense of the day uh, and any special events and then you get a it well like it says it's a spell a day but it's not always just a spell in the way that you might think of a spell you know um this is a, a chant and um, that's candle magic, this one, to expand abundance. Um, they've got one, this one was a crystal one, which was rather interesting. Um, you know, there's all sorts of different things and you could do, you could read them every day, but not practice them. Or you could perhaps pick and choose the ones that you think are work, that you want to work on. If you want to do it as a year and a day study, like a, a proper you know 366 days study thing then you could actually do each spell and it does tell you at the beginning of the book when the spells are what they're to do with so if you're looking for a success spell you could skip to june and read the 24th of june if you're looking for you know something for meditation and divination there's loads of them um, the very specific spells tend to be quite sparse, you know, home, love, uh, success, they're all a little bit sparse, but then general spells and uh, things like healing and protection uh, and uh, meditation and divination, they tend to be quite, there's quite a lot of those. Uh, there is also somewhere, there's a list of icons that tells you all about, uh, because each one has a, a different icon. So it tells you what it is. So May the 3rd, you look at that and you go, oh, I wonder what that symbol is. And you come to here and it goes, oh, it's a full moon. It takes a little bit of getting used to. These are quite complex. Um, but um, yeah, eventually you get used to it. I used this one last year, obviously the 2014 edition. Uh, and I had the 2013 edition for half of the year previously. And I, I, I quite like them. They're good. Um, uh, what I tend to do is when I wake up in the morning, instead of immediately picking up my phone and checking my email and starting the day with looking at seeing work stuff and immediately having oh I've got to think about you know setting up four different students today um, I read this instead and this sets me up for the day and I'm thinking about this while I go off and make my breakfast and have a cup of coffee and you know get ready for the day and things rather than immediately starting the day with work so it's a nice little ritual for me just to sit and read this and sometimes I'll use it, you know, um, I might wear the colour of the day if it's relevant or um, if I like the incense and I've got the incense, then I might burn the incense that day. You know, just, just little bits and pieces. If I like the spell, I might do it. Um, if I like the idea of it, but I don't think I need it right now, I might copy it into my workbook. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a nice it's a nice book for either beginners or people who have perhaps drifted a little bit and want to bring themselves back into it. I, I get a lot of comments from people saying, oh, I used to be really into this stuff, but I'm a bit rusty now because I haven't done it in years, but I want to get back into it. Well, this would be a good way to get back into it because it will remind you of stuff that you already know. Uh, you know, in this kind of thing, you can read about it. Fairy welcomes, you know, um, different correspondences and things and you can think well the incense of the day is cedar what's that got to do with fairies you know and if you know your correspondences then that should bring up some memories for you and if you don't then you can go and look it up so yeah this is a really nice book i like this book it's uh, an easy read it's an easy thing to do and it's quite quick and um un unobtrusive but at the same time if you wanted to make it more you easily could do 
So that is, I will put links down below to all of these books where I got them on Amazon UK. And I'm pretty sure you can, if you search on Amazon UK for something, there's a flag somewhere that says go to your local site. <clears throat> and if the book's available there, you can just switch to it on your site. So yes, yeah, Spell a Day Almanac from Llewellyn, pretty good. I'll come back to this one. I want to show you this one first. This is the Green Wiccan Year. Now, again, it's a Wiccan-centric one, but it's by Silja. Now, uh, Silja is an Irish priestess, high priestess, and she actually used to be the consultant for Spirit and Destiny. She's a lovely person. I love the way she... She used to do like readers letters and responding to readers letters and things and I just loved the way she responded to people uh, I don't like the new lady quite so much, but um, She just was very she came across as a very gentle soul and I like that very gentle and thoughtful and Always with the do I really need magic to do this for me? Is there another way I can help myself? which I like and respect uh, this is called The Green Wiccan Year, and it's a diary. Now, you could use it for uh, one year, or you could use it as I intend to use it, which is as a an ongoing reference book. The year starts here with Yule and Winter Solstice. I pref would prefer to see Halloween at the beginning, but, you know. It's got these little tabs with December and January here, and then you've got February... March and April, May, June, July, and so on, all the way through the back. It's got a little band to hold it together. It's a ring-bound book with a hard spine. Uh, I would be tempted to cut this down here so this is a bit looser because this is quite annoying. So I may, I may do that. I may detach this from the spine uh, so that it lies flatter because you can't fold it you can't really fold it back on itself because it's it's hooked to the spine whereas if this was loose you could fold it back and it would it would be a lot easier anyway <coughs> oops cables getting in the way uh, it's really beautifully decorated as you can see uh, some of the pages were well, all or actually all of the pages I think have this kind of watercolor wash on the background which is nice your index with all your different things and each divider is decorated with the information for the month uh, and the upcoming celebrations there's a spell here to get over a bad relationship it's candle magic so it's a nice basic introduction if you're a beginner starting the year off with a a nice basic get rid of the old let's start with the new bit of candle magic you can't really go wrong with candle magic as long as you have the right intention you really can't go wrong with candle magic it's very very easy all of these are pockets so if you've got your own notes and things that you want to add you can put them in here you could actually use this as a planner you can see the the setup in a minute there's bits and pieces like this which it, she calls it a spell but it's putting mandarin segments in ice cubes at yule parties to draw in the warmth and energy of the sun in the winter so you know it's it's nice it's a it's a nicety that you could think about doing you know um i wouldn't necessarily call it a spell if you're not casting an intention with it but you know what wiccans call spells and what hedge witches call spells are two different things so then you've got symbols and of course the association with christmas and stuff and then this is the actual planner so you've got, um, it's not like a week on a page or anything, it's kind of a week and a bit on a page. So you've got the 1st to the 8th, and then the 15th, and then up to the 23rd. So it's like eight days on a page, oh, eight days to view. It's a bit of a, a, bit of a strange layout. Um, in fact, this is seven or eight days to view. It's, it's got no real overall, you know, here's a week kind of thing. But you do have your moon phases, nice little decorations that are suitable for the time of year. These pretty background pages, of course, which are beautiful. 
various different um, important Wiccan dates, uh, birthday of Dion Fortune, member of the Golden Dawn and so on. They have little spells in the middle. Um, again, easy spells, uh, stuff that you can do at the kitchen sink. Silje is very much about doing what you can with what you have where you are. Uh, and if that means washing away bad luck using the kitchen sink, then that's what you do. After you've washed the dishes, you wash your bad luck down the sink with your dirty dishwater. That, that's the kind of thing that appeals to me. I like the way she does that. So, you know, that's... That's the basic cleansing spell. All the designs for the pages for the month are mostly the same. Uh, it's got Oh, it's got an Egyptian reference there, Egyptian Lucky Day of Sekhmet. Um, Friday for Love, the Day of Venus, the Goddess of Love, Friday's an excellent day for love magic. So, you know, just little bits and pieces like that, and then we're into January. Another spell. You see, it's a very simple layout, but it's got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six lines per date. But they're the same colour as the background, so they're not that intrusive. They're kind of easy to see. I think each month is a different colour, actually, each section, because um, it's currently a green section. Uh, dispel Negative Thoughts, another candle magic one, and then we're into Imok in February. Same thing again. You've got a pocket, you've got your Invocation of Bridget, you've got um, your... Wiccans call uh, Samhain the beginning of the year or the end of the year but then they treat Imok like the first day of the year so I don't quite know how Yule fits into that it's not something I've ever understood so maybe reading this will explain that to me Imok is my new year so it's a very pretty purple colour more candle magic uh, feather spell Attracting money, basic attraction spells. So it's it's nice for beginners, but it's not overpowering if you want to use it for something else. If you did want to use it as a daily reading, you know, perhaps making notes on what you read in here. It, this isn't intrusive. It's just nice to have little bits and pieces in here. So the whole book goes on like that all the way through. Um, ends in November, of course, and... We've got Wiccan Meditations, Protection and Hunting, so each section, if it doesn't relate to a specific uh, celebration, it has something like this to look at. Celebration of the Sun, Herbs and Magical Uses, Festival of Flowers, you know, quotes. So it's, it's really nice, it's a really nice book, uh, but because it's not year dated it's just the days of the year it's what what we call a day book over here i thought i could use it for logging things oh hang on let me show you the back of the book before i get onto that so at the back of the book you've got moon rituals uh, you've got a little bit for various different notes or cover notes or perhaps meetings or gatherings or you know festivals and events whatever you want to use them for If you're part of a group or a circle, you could use this as a um, meeting note for meeting notes for your circle and listing, you know, what spells you've done and new members and all that kind of stuff. Um, new spell notes. So if you create your own spells, you've got your information here. So what the use is, the ingredients and the special instructions. And there's one, two, three on each page. So there's quite a few of those in there for making up your own spells. And then uh, just a list of useful websites. So, yeah, it's quite a nice book. What I intend to use it for is logging my tarot readings, astrology readings, castings, that kind of stuff. So, for instance... On Christmas Eve, I did a tarot reading... And I don't need to write the details in here because I've got a specific book. I've actually got an awesome book, which is plain on one side and lines on the other. So I draw the spread on one side and then I write 
the information on the other side. It's a really excellent way of doing it. Uh, but for this, I can put in here, if I can find a pen on my desk anywhere. Come on, I must have a pen somewhere. Here we go. So I can put in here, for example, Christmas Eve. Uh, and I can log a lot of information in here. This is going to be a lifetime book because I have the tiniest writing known to man. You may have noticed. So 2015, sorry, 2014, Christmas Eve. I'll put T6, which is tarot, six card reading. Gen, general, RW my Rider weight deck and next to it I will write a word or two about what the reading was about I'm not going to write it on camera it was private reading for myself so I'm not going to put that in there but I'll just write a word or two and I can probably put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 per day of what I do I do do tarot readings quite regularly so you know, I can do quite a few of those. I did another one the other day. I did one on the... Let me check. Seventh. So on the seventh, 2015, it was a tarot reading. One card uh, for the day. So it was just a daily... Um, push <laughs> you know just a card of the day thing I also used my Rider weight deck for that and I got the full so you know I can just keep a quick log of these and same with spells castings rituals anything like that I do I can put them on the relevant days and just keep a general log of you know what practice I've done if I do some reading for something I can note that in here or whatever I just thought it'd be a cool way to use it because it's a beautiful it's a beautiful diary and I like the fact that you can add bits to it you know you can put little things in the pockets here and stuff I like the way it's divided up you can you know you can easily find what you're looking for yeah, it's just a nice little planner uh, and of course if you're doing a year and a day and you want a planner as well you could use it as a proper planner for the year because it's undated you can use it any year you like so yeah I really like that that is um, RRP 14.99 in the UK US $20 Canada 22 well, nearly 23 I would recommend that if you want some kind of planner or logbook or something to track your studies or spells or tarot readings or whatever. And finally for the year and a day type stuff is this, which is my year and a day thing. This is uh, a year and a day uh, by Timothy Roderick. Now I love Timothy Roderick's books. He does amazing books. On, I recently read one on shamanism and shape-shifting and he also did one on spirit animals he does a lot of dark moon magic I absolutely love the way he writes so when I saw this on Amazon for very very cheap and it's a brand new book look um, RRP it's another Llewellyn print RRP 25 US dollars 30 Canadian dollars what's that about 17 pounds in the UK I, th I think I paid about five on Amazon <laughs> and that was including postage which is nice for a big book like this it is a Wiccan centric book obviously but Timothy is very good at relating Wiccan religious practice to pagan law and um, hedge witchery basically the old ways and he does a lot of mirror scrying and looking at magic tools and healing work if you're a not quite a beginner but you don't know where to go next this is a brilliant book uh, I have actually started reading bits of it again it's laid out in the format of an almanac so there's a few bits in the introduction and then here's your first day the days change 
there's a different amount for each day. So day one, Earth-Centered Spirituality. So this is just an introduction to how to use the book, what you might want to look at. Um, keeping certain things in mind. There's another page for day one here. Then it tells you for the month, days 1 to 30, and this is not like January, this is the first month. Uh, for days 1 to 30, it says magical items to gather. It tells you on what dates you're going to need specific things. So if you know that you don't have any uh, small tapering green taper candles and you're going to need one on day 25, you can go and look up day 25, see if you want to do... I presume it's some kind of spell, candle magic t stuff. And of course you may not want to do the actual spell itself. The mother intonation. Invoking the energies of the mother. You might want to do that. That's um, quite a nurturing, healing kind of spell. It looks like, these are all mother related, so it looks like... It's working through Maiden, Mother and Crone here. Yeah, these are Maiden ones. And it talks about different things each day. So that's your list of what, the, what you need for day 1 to 30. Here's day 2. And day 2 is massive. <laughs> day 2 is enormous. <laughs> but it's, it's a glossary. So, you know, what does the word magic mean? What does the word power mean for Wiccans? What is Wicca? What is witchcraft? Um, what is a spell? So if you want to clarify for yourself what a, a word means in Wicca or what a me word means for you, then you, this will guide you along that path. Then we've got day three, melting beliefs. Yesterday you wrote down your initial reactions to the following words, so it's kind of a workbook. Um, the questions I asked to prompt your exploration of those words were these. So it's a recap of what you were doing yesterday. And then, today you perform your first ritual act that will make use of these of your answers to those questions. So you're melting your beliefs symbolically into a crock pot with a little bit of candle magic. Because all basic books start with a little bit of candle magic. Like I said, you can't go wrong with a little bit of candle magic. If you don't know what else to learn, or you're starting off learning things and you, it, it's just all really confusing, learn candle magic because candle magic covers colour associations, it covers scents, it covers oils, it covers herbs, it covers all the basic bits and pieces. If you want to anoint your candle with patchouli for a spell, what is that going to do? You know, And you can go and look up little bits as you work through. What is what is the effect if you combine the colour green with patchouli oil and a new moon? You know, you can look up those references and put it all together and figure out what it all means rather than just blindly following some spell in some book that some bloke in America wrote some time ago that you don't really know what it does. I, I think it's very important to understand what you're casting. Uh, and that's what these year and a day books are based on. So melting all your beliefs down, what you feel about these words, what they mean to you and putting this all together. And then day four, questioning your path. Uh, why are you exploring Wicca? Why are you, what are your previous spiritual practices? Um, what of those practices led you to investigate Wicca and how? So it really is kind of a journal work through. Um, I can see this being kind of a daily exercise rather than you know this you could read it through and go oh that's interesting and throw it aside uh, but this is more kind of you'd need to put up aside an hour or so to read this and actually work through the different things the beginning of the book is quite chunky you can see these days are like a full day to a page uh, but as you go along uh, it gets more complex. His day is 60 to 90. And just compare. <laughs> uh, days 1 to 30. Magical items to gather. Okay. Days 60 to 90. Magical items to gather. <laughs> 
So you're going to be doing a lot more work as you go along. The reason I picked up this book, uh, and there actually is the page that led me to picking up this book, uh, the Samain Bagabi chant. I have no idea what that is. I've never heard of it. And when I flicked back here, I saw that page on divine polarity and I was like, the hell is divine polarity? I might know what it is. I might be absolutely familiar with it, but it's never, I've never really thought about it. Divine indicates God and goddess and polarity means opposites. So, you know, God and goddess, male, female, good, bad, sun, moon, light, dark, yin, yang, all that kind of stuff. Uh, oh, <laughs> no, there's a whole list of them, look. <laughs> Is plus and plus and minus the good and the bad, the dichotomy basically. This is specifically to do with the golden goddess and learning your correspondences. But you know, it's got a thing here on exploring polarity. There's no reason why you couldn't do that as a pagan uh, and just ignore the specific Wiccan specific references. And you know, I I mean, I don't uh, Wiccans believe in the golden goddess as entities things people beings beings there's a good word um representations of things for a hedge witch the god and goddess is neither here nor there they're nice stories that represent uh morals and beliefs and things like that they're a bit like fairy tales as far as we're concerned we don't really you know i i will use luna because I, I do a lot of moon magic, I will use Luna, but I use her as a representation of the energy of the moon, not as the goddess Luna, if that makes sense. Uh, so this, you know, if you're a hedge witch, this is not difficult to weed out the bits that you don't need. Uh, and even the maiden mother and crone part, you know, we don't really, I don't know many hedge witches that really deal with the maiden mother and crone unless they're into wicca um but you know if you're female maiden mother and crone it's gonna happen it might not happen the way you expect it to happen but sooner or later you're gonna hit one of those parts of your life so you might as well know what they're about and what they represent uh Imok seeds ritual Imok sacred inscriptions so it talks about the wheel of the year as well uh, it's not, um, it, it's very writing centric. So if you're looking for a nice book with pretty pictures, this is not the one for you. But if you want a meaty workbook that you can really learn stuff like, you know, uh, uh, the element of earth and it's all, all its alchemical, alchemical symbols and uh, colours and elemental beings and all that sort of stuff. If you don't know that gnomes are the elemental beings of earth, then perhaps you need to read this book. You know, you can pick up all sorts of little bits and pieces. Talks about your tools at the back here. I think it's a really good book. Uh, I'm reading it as kind of my last thing at night kind of book, thought invoking, last thing at night book, and then I might make notes on it kind of thing. I'm only on about day two. I'm not doing it as a year and a day. I'm just reading a chunk at a time.